Hello golfers, welcome back to JD Golf TV, your home for playing better faster. Today's video is gonna be really important. I'm not gonna hit a darn golf ball. We're gonna talk about how to play golf. In fact, we're gonna talk about how to play better golf regardless of your level of golf. The pros can take this advice just like juniors, college players, regular guys, regular girls, even folks who have jobs and only get to play golf once a week. So let's get after it. Well, have you ever thought about this? This is a good question. How many times does a professional golfer, and by the way, the ladies on the LPGA Tour play longer golf courses pound for pound than the men? I've talked to several. They almost never have iron into a par five. And if they do, it's a long iron, a really long iron. My first point is the pros probably have, the men pros probably have eight, nine, 10 wedges in their hand per round. I want you to play the right length golf course. Okay, now something called the danger zone. The danger zone is when you're hitting a seven iron or longer into a green, so seven, six, five, all the way up. And when you are in that zone, you have harder shots to hit the green. I was talking to a bunch of pros at Isleworth in, uh, in Orlando, and we were talking about golf. And I said, well, you can't touch Tiger Woods. Like, what do you mean you can't touch Tiger Woods? Like, well, Tiger Woods is gaining, this is years ago now, is gaining three and a half strokes per round in the danger zone. That is not possible. Three and a half strokes per round with long irons in his hand. The way he does it, he just gets it on or near the green. And he doesn't short side himself. Right? He's just, the guy's so smart. It's unbelievable. He's not just good. He's smart. Right? So playing smart golf is what this is about. Now, however, to play smart golf, you've got to be able to get your drive and play. You have to get the drive play. We got to stop losing balls off the tee, hitting them in the hazards, hitting them in the trees. To do that, number one, you have got to invest in some Dr. Dunnigan's How to Make Your Shots Not Stink. I don't know if I can say this or not, but it's foot powder. This is the best one. I've used them all. Okay? Don't go paying 20 bucks for a half a can of this that says golf on it. Just get this, okay? Just so you know, if you hit that golf ball off the toe, it's gonna to wanna to put some hook spin on it. Off the heel, it's gonna to wanna to put some slice spin on it, regardless of your club delivery. You could be having the world's greatest draw swing, hit that thing half inch off the heel, and it slice into the right trees. Yep, get this thing on the center of the face-ish. Okay, so we know what the golf ball's doing. So you've got a little, this is the Callaway version, Right, we have little circles in there. It's the smaller circle, okay? And just so you know, I have yet to see a golfer not improve their distribution of impact on the face immediately just by spraying the face and being aware of it. For the little kids, I spray the face up and I take my, you've seen my uh, chopstick deal, and I draw faces. I say, you know what this face needs, right? They go, yeah, it needs to be smashed, right? Yeah. It needs dimples on the face. Get it? So once you can do that, and you're hitting the ball very close to the middle-ish, now what I want you to do is I want you to shrink down the difference between the face and path. You know the ball takes off toward the face, curves opposite the path relative to the face. Okay? If the path goes right of the face, ball draws, Path goes left of the face, ball fades. And you can reverse that if you want. Face left of path, draw. Face right of path, fade. Check out that video I did. There's, a, there's a one big one out there that I've done. One, two. Oh my gosh, I got three of them on there. Okay? Check them out. It'll help you understand what's going on. What I want you to do is I want you to remove some of the curve from the golf ball by shrinking the difference down. If we're curving the ball 40 yards, it's hard to do it repeatedly for one. You're not Bubba Watson, no offense. But you're also losing a lot of distance when you do. Now, 
We've got our driver going in play. And by the way, the straighter goes, the farther it goes, period. And just so you know, the draw does not go farther than the straight ball. The straighter the ball goes, the farther it goes. That's the, that's the physics of it. Now, once you have that, the next thing is your irons. With your iron, what I want you to really, really master. Oh, did I ever tell you about, oh no, he's going to say it again. Please get your grip on there right. Get your grip and set up right, please. But with your irons, anything when the ball's on the ground, you've got two aspects of contact. One is where the club bottoms out. It should be ball, then, very shortly thereafter, turf. Ball, then, turf. The low point of the swing is just after impact. Okay? I need you to work on that, but that's only one aspect of contact. The next aspect is to get it back in the middle of the face again. Use your powder. Now, by the way, up here in Pennsylvania, it's winter. It's not the dead of winter, but it's cold enough that I don't ever want to go outside again. So indoors on a mat or outdoors on a mat, using the spray is very helpful. And again, everybody, everybody has gotten better just by spraying the face. So now we work on our two aspects of contact and we get the ball going forward. Yay. We're getting good at golf. Now, next part is when you put any, any wedgie in your hand. Everybody likes to go wedgie, right? You've got to be able to get that ball solidly struck and on the green so that what we're looking for, and I would like a message. By the way, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and send this. If you're getting something out of my videos, I'm doing this for you. I'm trying to help the world of golfers. Let your buddies know, okay? But now what we've got to do is we've got to get our wedge on the green from everywhere. Bunker, green side, tight lie, flop shot. You don't even have to hit a Phil Mixon flop shot. Just hit something high enough to hold the green. If you can do that, guess what? We are now on the green in one plus regulation. Send me that text. Put it in the comments. I did it, coach. If you have 18 straight greens in regulation, have you ever made a darn par? Of course you have. Even if you suck at golf, you've already made a handful of pars anyway. Now, your percentage of pars is going to go dramatically up by hitting the driver in play and the next ball solid. You get the wedge on the green, so we're always having a putt. 18 straight putts for par. Something's got to go in. You know, take your putting and try to get real good at three, four, and five footers. And then when you get outside of 10 feet, just try to stop the ball dead at the hole. If every ball finishes closer to the hole on your putts, more have to fall in by accident. Oh my gosh, do you know what your handicap is now? It's about a four. Isn't that cool? It's such an easy formula to become better than 97% of the golfers in the entire world. Drive and play. Solidly struck iron toward the green. On the green in one plus regulation. The better you get with your wedgie, the lower your scores. The better you get with your iron, the lower your scores. Getting the ball in play off the tee can lower your scores as well. But if you already get it in play off the tee, the other two things will be your thing. No more three putts. Look at me. Stop three putt. You got to stop three putting this golf ball. It's killing you. Okay. If you do that, folks, think about this. The formula for breaking 90 is bogey every hole. Now we have a par putt every hole. If you have a par putt, if you're not even paying attention, you're going to make one of these putts. Not to mention that you may have got a par five on in regulation and two putt for par. You've got three or four of those par fives. You may have gotten another short iron on the green. Oh my goodness, now we're looking at low 80s golf. Now we got to navigate our way around the golf course. And that's what the remainder of this lesson is going to be on. How do I proceed around this golf course? So we took a trip to Pebble Beach. No, I've never played it, but gosh, I've got to get out here. I have got to get out there. I'm going to make it a goal. All right. Here's a good example for you. We have a 355 yard par four. Now listen, I stopped playing the back tees myself. I'm 56. I got shoulder problems. You know all the problems I got. 
Um, what I was finding is from the back tees, and our golf courses are always soft, no roll. I'm in the danger zone every damn hole, like hitting hybrid into every par four. This is a ass whooping coming my way if I've got the hardest shots into the green every hole. So I moved up. I actually moved up to now guess what? Guess what? I can reach some of the par fives every once in a while. Ha <laughs> ha! Guess what? Eagle putts are even more fun than par putts, just so you know. So play the appropriate yardages. Okay, let's look at this. That's what we're faced with. Straight down the middle. It's a straightaway hole, and it's pretty darn wide side to side until I do this. But Dunnigan, you're only looking at a target 213 yards away. One. Give yourself a bigger target for your drive, for goodness sakes. Now, follow the little yellow ball. If we can find it. There we go. There's our tee ball. All right, it's 213 to here. If I come down here on the right-hand side, I can take this and try to move it as best I can. So I'm going to carry my driver 235 to 245. Every once in a while, I'll get one to go farther, but I can't rely on that. I have to hit it perfect. So 237, which is really in my zone, wait a minute, 237, wait a minute, look at how narrow that fairway is right there between the bunker and the trees. Now, if I do that, I've only got a pitching wedge in at 132, which is delicious. We love that, except I just gave myself one half of landing area. So I'm going to, and now here's a case where, why would I take that on? I can't cover the bunker, which means carry it. Right? Why don't I just lay it back this way, and I've still got a short iron. I can hit it 230, and I've only got a 9 iron into the green, folks. That's my strategy. I have just taken the bunker out of play, which could be tough. If I'm a really good fairy bunker player, and that fairy bunker poses no threat, meaning it's very, very flat, it's not hard to get out, that ball might get hit up there, but I doubt it because I got the trees on the right-hand side. And by the way, I did not bring my chainsaw to practice today. I could even aim farther to the left and give myself a beautiful area between the right tree line and over here on the left. And now I've got my best fit target. I'm gonna hit the golf ball. Basically, my driver goes to about 30 yards to the right to about 30 yards to the left, and I don't know which one's coming. A 60-yard wide dispersion pattern with my driver is actually not bad at all, folks. It's just honest. And most of us are being very dishonest with ourselves. Okay, so that's T-ball strategy. I'm bringing in a wider fairway with respect to giving myself a playable shot to the green. I don't want to lay back here into 170 yards unless I have to. And yes, there are times that I have to, right? Remember something, on hard holes, bogeys don't suck. On easy holes, give me an easy shot. I'm cool with that. These greens are tiny here. All right, now, when I go into this green, if I can take my ball here. It didn't track me have fun. All right, so there I am hitting 149 yards, and this pin is right in the middle, and there's deep bunkers both sides. This ball looks like the flag is just right of dead center of the green, this ball is going to go in the fattest side of the green, which is between this edge and this edge. That's the fattest side and about one yard left of that pin. That is my smart target that can fit my range of dispersion the bestest. These greens are tiny here. In fact, there was a, there was a graphic on Twitter that you could fit the entire front nine greens on one green at St. Andrews. That's cool. Got that? So middle hole location, don't worry about it too much. One of the most iconic par threes in the game of golf. You can hit everything from sand wedge to four iron on this green. I've never been here. I got to go. And by the way, you're looking right into the ocean. And what you're going to start to want to think is, okay, don't hit it in the water. Stop. Call time. Throw the penalty flag and go, you have your head firmly up your butt. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's only 110, right? And the hole's cut back on the green. Now, I had this one girl got a scholarship to college, Virginia. She's an animal. And 
she's telling me that she's going to hit this club. I think it was eight iron between 142, might have been her nine, and 144 every time she hits it. And I go, seriously? So I give her the softest test of dispersion ever. And I have her hit shots off of a mat. No target, no scorecard, no hazards. No weird lies. And turns out that softball test resulted in an eight yard dispersion front to back. And that was actually extremely good. Now, which one's she gonna hit? Is she gonna hit the one that's at the beginning of that dispersion pattern or the end of that dispersion pattern? She doesn't know. And as long as she thinks she's gonna hit it this exact distance, she's gonna pick poor targets and end up missing greens that she should never ever miss. That is the truth for every level of the game. So in this green, the hole is cut back, long sucks, but it's only a wedge. My side to side dispersion with a wedge is not bad at all. Okay. It's only about four yards left to four yards, right? Okay. That pretty much fits on that green. My dispersion with a wedge is more front to back. Now, in this case, I would be hitting not a 110 shot because if I try to hit it 110 and I flush it and it goes over that green, well, it's real hard to hit the golf ball while you're trying to swim. So I'm going to play the golf ball to go between 100 and 105. Okay, that gives me a big giant range. And if I miss this thing, it's going to go on the front of the green and roll to the middle. If I hit it good, it's going to roll. It's going to bounce right about 100 to 105 and roll up a little bit. And if I flush it, it's going to fly to the flag and still never be able to go over. I hope that is very clear. When I ask you, how far do you hit your seven iron? And you tell me 155, I will tell you you're full of poop. If I really figure it out, your range is probably 15 yards from your flush puppy where you just absolutely roast it to a little bit of a miss hit that comes up on that short end of your dispersion. It's 15 yards, guaranteed, probably more. Now, that says, how do you get to a back hole location? You accidentally flush one. That's the only way. Don't fly it to a back hole location. I was watching golf with the wonderful Francine Dunnigan this morning, and I watched guys on this little tiny wedge shot. These are, these are world-class players. Fly this golf ball right over the flag, right over the green with a wedge because they have perfect control over the distance, correct? Oh, there's wind out there too. Yeah. Boink. Guy makes a double with a wedge in his hand. That is unforgivable. And if you think about a professional golfer, how much money that just cost that guy making double with a wedge. I taught a guy played on tour, Sean O'Hare, and he said, I thought you said I can't gain strokes with a wedge. I said, you can't because these guys are good with a wedge. But you miss a green with a wedge, you are lapped by the entire field. Well, except those two morons that just flew the green with a wedge. Folks, I'm telling you, it's not about more birdies. It's about fewer bogeys and others. Trust me on that. So that was my theory here. The only way you get back to a hole, a back hole location is accidental. And by the way, the highest scoring averages, this is coming from my friend Scott Fawcett, who is a great guy, by the way. Um, on tour, if the hole's up in the front, the guys come up short and make the most bogeys with a front hole location because they're just playing the number instead of the dispersion pattern, right? So with a front hole location, if you put water in front, almost nobody ever goes in the water. When forced to not be idiots, they control their distance. But with nothing in front, they come up front of the green, spin it back, boink, bogey. You're not going to hit it the number you're trying to hit it, except sometimes you are, except you can't predict when. Please understand that. Please understand that. And by the way, I told you my dispersion with the driver is 60 yards wide. Dustin Johnson was 85 yards wide, moved it down to 67 yards wide by only playing the fade. He did not improve his left rough tendency. He was actually more in the left rough. He got rid of his double cross. 
And guess what happened? Became number one in the world. I think, personally, Justin Thomas right now is killing himself. He is what Ben Hogan called TFF with his ball, T-balls. Too freaking fancy. He might not use the word freaking. He's trying to make it do this and do this and do this. And he's hit the ball sideways. Just get the ball and play with the T-ball. Don't get too fancy. You cannot win with the driver. I know they say you can by hitting it far. But the fact is, you got to finish the hole. You can only lose with the driver. And you can lose the driver really, really, really quick. One swing. Okay? Play smarter. All right, here's another great hole. Good God. Are there any bad holes in this golf course? Great hole. We got 168 and we got beach to the right. Okay, 168, danger zone. So where would you want to hit this golf ball? 168, that is a really good seven iron for me. Or a little knocky downy six iron. Now we've got no wind, so that's making life a lot easier. I love being able to control the wind, which I usually can't do. So in this case here, Boy, where would you want to hit the golf ball? Well, think about how wide the spray is of your, in this case, 7-iron. could be 6-iron. It could be 5-iron for some of you. could be a hybrid. It doesn't matter what club it is. It matters we are in the danger zone. Therefore, let's try to not make a giant number. Give me a chance at a par. Get on the green or on the green in 1-plus regulation. No penalty strokes. So now here it is. And here's what you hear. Right, let's say that the hole was cut to the right of the green. You hear the guys on TV, the morons on TV. Oh, he's got the hole cut to the right. He should play this up the middle of the green and curve it back to the pin. Oh, hell no. That's the assumption that I need to make 18 birdies. So I'm teaching one of my boys. We're having a talk. He's playing uh, professional golf. Unfortunately, did not get past the mini tours, but he's a great kid nonetheless, and I love him dearly. And he's playing in a web.com tournament, and uh, that's now called the Corn Dog Tour. Corn Ferry, sorry. <laughs> Dude, you got to make birdie every hole out here. I go, son, I've seen 30 under win, but I have not seen 72 under win yet. I haven't seen close to 72 under win. Okay? So can we just admit that you don't have to birdie every hole? And, you know, he would, he would be trying to birdie every hole. He would miss on the wrong side. Boink, instant bogey. And, man, I'm telling you, when you're playing pro golf, bogeys hurt a lot. Doubles really, really hurt. So, anyway, I told him, okay, I want you to do me a favor. Next round, do not do anything other than hit the dead center of the green regardless where the hole is. Now, that's not quite the right strategy because the right strategy would be between the flag stick and the safe side of the green. That would be the smart play. Not conservative. Smart targeting. Because we're smart because we know that our ball doesn't go exactly where we're looking. Every time. Except sometimes. By random chance. So anyway, he goes out shoots 65. He calls me up. He goes, I hate it when you're right. And I go, well, you're paying me a lot of money to be right. Listen up. <laughs> anyway, it's a really big deal. Okay, this ball, if anything, when you've got lost ball on one side, the ball is aimed away from the lost ball and curved farther from the lost ball because we don't have that much control. So whatever would be on my right side of my dispersion pattern, the rightmost ball that I can hit on my worst right shot is going to be on that green. A nicer shot's going to be closer to the flag, and a pull's going to be in the bunker. Deal? I can play out of the bunker. I can't swim very well and hit a golf ball, like we said. Is that clear? This is really clear. What you're hearing on TV is dead wrong. Even the best players in the world, I ain't seen 72 under yet, right? Everybody in the world needs to make fewer bogeys. And the pros don't need to make more birdies. Trust me, I'm telling you right now, just think about it when you're watching golf on TV, which I hope you do, so you see some of the dumb stuff that even the best players in the world do. Oh, baby. How about this sucker? 
I got to get out here. I, I'm just going to have to. This is incredible. Look at that hole. Okay, par five, and it's only 500 yards. Man, I can get there. I can get home in two on this one. I could barely get there. Home in two, but I got to tell you what. I've got 249 yards of carry straight down the middle of the fairway. Now, I'm fortunate enough that I cannot reach that tree that's beyond that. Can't reach it. It's not coming. But if I absolutely pummel one, I could get that ball to go. Let's see where it would be. So if I absolutely get all of my driver and I do hit it the 270, straight down, oh, I'm dead. Well, actually, to be quite honest, I'm not really dead. I've just taken out the green in two, okay? But guess what? Even from there, I still have 268 yards to go. Guess what that means? Uh, Dunnigan, you're not getting home in two. Sorry. To be quite honest, if I hit this golf ball straight this way, ooh, I can maybe get into that green side. Oh, I can't get there. Boy, I can eat this thing right here. Look at that. I can aim my golf ball right here. Since I can't get home in two, I can give myself the widest possible fairway to hit or playable area to hit by aiming this way. Okay, it's 224. And again, I can't hardly get to this bunker if I don't go. Let me see from to the bunker. I would have to hit the golf ball. 240. Ooh, I just brought that bunker into play. All right, cool. I could actually hit a three wood on that hole. I could hit a driver over this way more. All right, but now look at, I'm bringing the water more. A little toe ball. If I've got this, this is legit driving target, but if I tow this, it's in the water. So don't tow it, Dunnigan. Good luck, folks. So let's say I did hit my three wood out to here, or even driver, and I hit my average driver, it's okay. Let's say I get there, I get to 232. Lower stress kind of tee ball laying out there. I can't get there in two anyway. Again, even if I hit it up in here, I still can't get home. So what's the point, right? Are we here to try hero shots or beat somebody's butt? I got 278 up to the green. Guess what? Ain't getting home in two. So what I want me to do is to give me a nice wedgie because everybody likes good wedgie. When we're thinking about this, the closer I get down to here, right? So 217, that's my, four, my, my hybrid. All right, here's, we're getting into my four wood. Okay, yeah, somewhere around there with my four wood. All right, the shot's not getting any easier. You see that? Now I'm coming in over the bunk. And 66 yards, and I gotta tell you the truth, most people kinda suck inside of about, well, some 80, some 70 yards and in. They really suck because that's actually the most challenging part of the game. So here we are. I could also lay this golf ball up this way, back here. And look, I got 125. But I do have plenty of room up in this way, right? Even if it's in the rough, this isn't wide enough. I'm only gonna lay it up. What would my layup be to here, Dunnigan? Oh, it's 226 to there, ooh. To 75, ooh, 75 is a good number for me. So I could hit my hybrid club up in this region somewhere, I'd have enough speed on my wedge shot to stop it on the green, whereas the, so I start getting closer, it's harder to stop the ball because I can't get so much spin on it. So I might lay this back here. But if I wasn't feeling good about my hybrid or my long iron, I could, I could lay it back here. And look at how wide my landing air is, giant. And I still only have 121 in. These are the things you got to be thinking about. And this green is super tiny, but it is. I'm hoping that this helps you tremendously to improve your decision making and gives you a very clear idea on how to become a really good golfer that can go out and play with anybody and feel comfortable. All right, folks, play smart. Get that ball in play. Hit that second ball solid. Get you a good wedgie. Don't three putt. Make more than your share from three to five feet. And you're going to be really good at this game. All right, get after it.